All right, good morning, everybody. Um, today, we are going to um, not focus on the details of reconstruction, but rather we are going to be focusing on the bigger, um, I like to call them overarching topics. Some people like to think of them as themes. I struggle with the, 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 the topic or, or the word themes because it, it brings me to back to like English, right? Um, to language themes, romance and drama, um, which if we're being honest, like, yeah, those things exist in real life history as well. Um, what I like to say is when I'm gonna be talking about the bigger overarching topics, I, I'm gonna call those like meta the meta analysis. What I mean by that, when I say the term meta, M-E-T-A, is I'm looking at <clears throat> those big things that could be compared between different events in history or different time periods in history. To give you a maybe more relatable example, okay, can everybody think for a second about the sport of basketball? Okay, whether you play it or not, you've probably at least seen it or you've heard of it. So my question is, what topics or what things in basketball can we compare to other sports? What do we think? Ms. Omar? I was going to say the same thing. Um, you all said uh, the points, like when you get, when you like score um, or, yeah. Well, like the players are how. Um, well, let's start, let's just start with the, the winner in a game. Yeah, let's, let's start with the points thing. And then we can have other people. I see people joining in on chat. I love it. Um, so we can compare the way in which points are scored in various sports. Basketball, you've got one, two, or three point possibilities. In football, our scoring possibilities are two, three, six, and one. And in baseball, our only scoring options are one at a time. You can't score more than one run at a, at a particular time or with one particular player. Um, so some, oh, Zephy, I like this last one, attributes. Can you give me an example? I love the, the word you're using here, attributes, but to help everybody else, just in case, can you give me an example of an attribute? Yes. Okay. So how tall you are, um, maybe how strong you are how fast you go, absolutely, Zephy. So we can compare, we can, we can almost call this like the physical fitness or the physical features of individuals, right? And you can do this even within sports or, or individual sports. Take football, for example, American football. Um, the physique, right? The body type of a wide receiver somebody whose position is designed to run really fast versus a lineman, somebody whose position is designed to block and get in the way and push people around, they're going to have very different physical attributes to help them with their overall goals. Um, so the other things you guys have on here are really, really great. So EJ is talking about offense. You can flip that around, of course, and talk about offenses and defenses and comparing those between different groups or different um, sports. So I think people are getting this idea um, that meta topics, or when I'm talking about meta, I'm discussing those things that are comparable between things. Okay, topics that are comparable between things. Does anybody else 
or would anybody else like another example? Would you like it explained in a different way? Or does anyone have any questions before I, I move on? All right. Well, I took that little time to explain meta concepts and themes because today I want to talk about three of those themes, okay? Three of those meta topics. The first is human capital. The second is compromise. And the third is goals. And again, the purpose here is to look at these so that we can not only understand reconstruction better, but we can also compare reconstruction to other events or other eras, times in history. All right, so first off, we're gonna talk about human capital. I've discussed this briefly, briefly before, um, but does anybody have an idea of what I mean by human capital? Chris? Um, I'm not exactly sure, but I think, isn't it like something about like a uh, collection of skills or something? Excellent. Yes. Skills have an important part to play in human capital. Anyone else? Okay. So when we talk about human capital, I loved it, Chris. We're talking about the skills and knowledge that make someone valuable. Now, before we continue on, I want everybody here to know and understand that when I talk about human capital, mostly I'm talking about skills and knowledge in terms of jobs, okay? I'm not talking about how nice a person is or how easy it is to get along with somebody. Those are aspects, those are skills, okay? but they're not exactly what we're talking about here, okay? When I talk about human capital, I'm talking about the skills and knowledge that make someone valuable for a job. So for example, oops, my cords are getting all messed up. For example, um, one of the most valuable but often underappreciated skills is simply the ability to read and write. That is a skill that you are all learning right now and improving right now that's going to improve your human capital. It's gonna give you better skills, okay? Um, now, we can also talk about knowledge, all right? So maybe I have a really good knowledge of physics. I know a lot of information about physics. So that could help me or, or be a part of my human capital. Before I talk about reconstruction specifically, are there any questions about what I mean when I talk about human capital? Or would anybody like another example? Okay. So if human capital, oh yeah, absolutely, Zephy. So, um, oh, okay. 
So one thing that I need to know, right, for my human capital, for the job that I do, is I have to be able to communicate with families. So I have to be able to talk and share messages and emails with the families of my students to do the job that I do. Okay, so that's a skill that I improve upon. Oh, absolutely. You guys can be taking screenshots throughout um, and I'll, I'll pop it out when, when it's near the end of class. Um, now, when we're talking about reconstruction, there is a specific group that the US as a whole needs to try and improve their human capital. Does anybody know what group I'm referring to? What group during reconstruction needed help in improving their human capital? Close, Zephy, but let's get a little bit more specific. It's a particular group of people. Faith? The Freeman? Absolutely. Now, we know that the US tried to improve this because we had the creation of the Freedmen's Bureau. Now, a bigger question might be, why did Freedmen need help in improving their skills and knowledge? So when we talk about freedmen, remember, we're talking about ex-slaves. We're very specific here. Can anybody explain why might the US government want to create an organization specifically to help ex-slaves improve their skills and knowledge? Okay, let's break this down. So let's first look at prior to being freedmen, we know that these were previously slaves. Now, and maybe you didn't remember this or maybe you didn't write this down before, um, or maybe you just never knew this, but in several states, it was not only discouraged, but it was illegal to teach slaves to read and write. So if I was a slave during the time Civil War or prior, most states had laws making it illegal for me to learn how to read and write. If we go back to our human capital, what's one of the most basic skills that everyone needs in order to really, you know, show off their human capital? Yes. At its very kind of base, we need to be able to read and write so that we can communicate with one another, right? If you have a contract for me to sign, I need to be able to see, well, how much are you paying me? How much am I supposed to work? All that kind of stuff. Well, if you have slaves 
and it was illegal for them to read and write, what's going to happen once now they are free? Are they just going to be able to get any job that they want? Yeah, they're definitely, Zephy, if, you, if those of you that don't have the chat open, I definitely suggest you have chat open because people share really good stuff. Um, yeah, Zephy, they're definitely going to be behind. And that's why this organization, the Freedmen's Bureau, was created so that they could hopefully catch up by targeting these groups. By targeting freedmen specifically, they could help improve their skills, yep, and catch them up to speed. Now, we're going to learn, okay, unfortunately, that plan does not work, largely because people keep getting in the way and stopping the Freedmen's Bureau from doing what it was designed to do. Um, but we'll be discussing that later on this week and, and early next week, okay? So when we look at human capital in terms of reconstruction, we're really looking at the freedmen, the ex-slaves who are now on their own, free, needing to improve their skills because they haven't been allowed to in years and generations prior, okay? Questions about human capital before I move on? That's the bigger one. So the next two should go a little bit quicker. Okay, so next up we have compromise. And hopefully this isn't a shocker, but compromise is used a lot in history, okay? So when we look at reconstruction, we're looking at a few different compromises. We're looking at compromises between the North and South. We're looking at compromises between regular Republicans and radical Republicans, all of which have to figure out a way to get what they want, okay, without angering or taking advantage of the other side. So when we look at compromises, we need to look at what is, sorry, what is one side getting versus the other? And a great comparison that we will be able to make between Reconstruction is like things such as the Missouri compromise. How does Reconstruction and its compromises compare to, say, others like the Missouri? Um, actually, yeah, that is a much better way of putting it, um, Zephy. I like that a lot. Okay, which side is benefiting and how much? So when we look at compromises, we can look at them in terms of not only what were they, but also we can look at them in terms of their effectiveness. Did they accomplish what they set out to. And you need really look no further than say the Missouri Compromise. And we ask ourselves, 
what was the goal of this? Well, really, it was to prevent the Civil War. So since the Civil War took place, we could argue that the Missouri Compromise was not very successful. Now, did it delay things? Sure. So we could argue that it was you know, helpful, but maybe not successful. As we get more and more through Reconstruction, you'll be able to compare those things as, oops, sorry about that. You'll be able to compare those things as well. How successful was Reconstruction versus, say, the Missouri Compromise? Um, and that's another way that we make these comparisons between different eras or different events, okay? Questions about compromise. Okay, then our last meta topic, our last big item, our goals. So when we ask ourselves and we compare things in history, we can often compare them by what was their end goal? What were they trying to get out of really anything that they're doing? So when we look at something like Reconstruction, I would argue that there are at least two major goals for Reconstruction. Does anybody think they can tell us what one of these goals was? What did they want from Reconstruction? Faith? They wanted the South to rejoin the Union. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna fancy that up a little bit. So we want to integrate the Confederate states back into the Union. Oops. Now, that's great, Faith. I think that that's absolutely, if not, a, well, I mean, it's definitely a goal. I would even argue that that is like the main priority, goal number one. But can anybody think of a second goal for Reconstruction? And for this, maybe we want to look at things like the, oh, whoops the 13th or 14th amendments. Oh, ah, thank you. Yes, Zephy. Um, <laughs> I got to work on how to, is there a way, does anybody know, do, does chat ever ding? Like, can you make chat ding? Anybody know that? Okay. It'd be really cool if you could. Um, so, if you have your chat open, Zephy just gave what I would argue is for sure the second goal. And that is, excuse me, again, integrating. But in this case, it's integrate freedmen into US society, OK? Um, and the reason I'm using the term integrate instead of, a lot of people would argue, oh, goal, Reconstruction, the goal there is just to end slavery. Yes, if it was just the 13th Amendment, I would agree with you that maybe then the goal would be just ending slavery. But because they continue and pass the 14th Amendment, which deals with citizenship. And then later, there's the 15th Amendment. Have you guys done the 15th Amendment yet? Or is maybe that's tomorrow? No, not yet. Okay. Um, I, and I'll admit this, especially now in, in online ways, 
I'm, I get a little confused about where you are in terms of the day. Um, yes, it, exactly, Zephy. We can tell if it was just the 13th, we could say, oh, then it's just about freeing them. But the 14th Amendment is about making African-Americans citizens. And then the 15th Amendment is all about voting and not being able to restrict the vote based on race or ethnicity or previous indentured servitude, as they put it. Um, so it becomes a bigger topic in the goal of reconstruction that we are integrating these groups or this group in particular into American society. Now, again, what we're doing here is we're creating comparable topics. So when I talk about the goals of reconstruction, I can compare them to say the goals of World War II or the goals, actually the best comparison later on in the year will be comparing reconstruction with the civil rights movement of the mid 1900s because both of these are all about how to integrate minority groups in terms of reconstruction, it's freedmen, in terms of the civil rights movement, it's um, minorities, specifically African-American, but Hispanic, Native American, um, Asian American, women, um, all of these groups get more representation and an increased integration into US society during the 1950s. Um, so we can compare that too. All right, so to take a big overarching look at today's work, our goal was to be able to look at meta topics or themes that we can use to compare different events or points in history. We can compare ideas like human capital, the skills people gain and the knowledge people gain to improve themselves. We can look at things like compromise and how different groups benefit from one another or in some cases take advantage of one another. And we can also look at the goals of different events or time periods and be able to compare them with places, or, or, or sorry, events in different places or events in different times. Any of these three human capital compromise or goals that you guys have any questions or concerns about right now? Okay, so then here is, oops, sorry. Here is your assignment for today. In chat, I just posted a question that you're gonna answer in today's discussion post. The question is, how would you explain one of the three concepts we discussed today? Compromise, goals, or human capital? So your job today, and you have 15 minutes to do it before the end of class, um, is how would you explain one of the three concepts we discussed today? Human capital, compromise, and goals, sorry, or goals. Questions about your assignment for today or your kind of job for today? I strongly suggest that you take that question from chat and copy it right now, just in case you forget it or just in case you misplace it. Um, Take this moment too, if you want to take a screenshot of 
um, my iPad screen. I'm going to take that off in about 10 seconds or so. And then finally, I've just launched a little poll um, for my attendance today. I'm going to try and do this more often to help me um, track down some of the students that are not attending these regularly. Um, so I need three more people to fill out this poll. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing in about five seconds. So if you need to take a screenshot, please do so now. I'm still missing one person from the poll. All right, I'm gonna take off the sharing. All right, um, that's it for me today. If you guys have any questions or concerns or wanna talk about anything, my office hours will start at 10. Um, and you can of course message me and we can set up a time outside of that as well. Um, but that's just the easiest way, all right?